So yesterday we went over the kind of the concepts of the photoelectric effect. Um, today we're going to go over more the kind of the physical apparatus, how the measurements are made. So um, let's go ahead and draw this out. Um, so you're going to have two plates, metal plates. This one, this is going to be the actual photoelectric surface that we're going to be sending photons onto. Okay, so for example, maybe we send um, some red light onto the surface. And what we're going to do actually is we're going to hook this up to a battery or some kind of voltage source. And we're actually going to make this negative on this side and positive on the other side. We're going to have an ammeter in here to measure current. And actually, we could, I guess we could put a voltage source across this. So this is essentially what our setup is going to look like. Now let's imagine that we first start with zero volts here. Let's say we send in some light. Um, actually, let's say we send in some red and um, nothing happens. In other words, we have no current measured here whatsoever. Well, what that would tell us is that nothing has been ejected at all. There's no ejection of electrons. So remember, one of the findings of the photoelectric effect is there needs to be a minimum energy before ejection occurs. And if we have minimum energy, we also would have a minimum frequency. Okay, so we need to have some minimum energy before that e ejection even occurs. So let's say with red light, nothing happens. Let's say we increase the energy. Let's say we use some green light here. We send in some green light and we have some eject electrons that get ejected. Now notice, the electrons are just going to kind of be ejected in random directions. The one that we care about is the one that's going to go exactly this way uh, towards this plate. So if we have this electron ejected, um, it's going to head on towards this plate, right? And then we can go ahead and measure the current coming through it. Now the purpose of this voltage source is what we can do if we um, increase the voltage here, we're going to increase the negatives on this plate. And notice now we have these negatives repelling this electron. So this electron is going to want to head over here. And as we keep increasing this electron, eventually we're going to reach the point where this electron can't make it. And so we call this the stopping voltage. That would be the voltage at which the electron is unable to make it across the plate. So the purpose of the stopping voltage is, well, we can vary this. And whatever that voltage is going to be, remember voltage is kind of a concept of energy. So whatever that voltage is going to be, that's going to tell us that kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy that that electron has. So that tells us the max energy that this particular electron has um, to make it across. So if this electron had more energy, then our stopping voltage would have to increase. Now let's just put this in energy terms. Um, remember, um, energy, we use the units of joules or electron volts. And so let's say, for example, we have a stopping voltage of four electron volts. Well, that what that would mean is that we'd have, sorry, stopping voltage of four volts. What that would mean is, is that the kinetic energy would have, well, one electron would be, well, one electron times four volts or four electron volts. So in other words, the max kinetic energy of the ejected electron would be equal to the um, stopping voltage in electron volts. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, or hopefully you got that. Um, so number two, what we would do is we would therefore increase the, um, the frequency. So let's say instead of green, let's say we sent in some blue. So this is going to be a higher frequency, therefore a higher energy. And then it's going to eject these electrons. Again, we're going to look for the ones that are coming straight across like this. So that electron moving across, um, the stopping voltage is going to have to go up. Before we can stop it from moving, we're going to have to increase that because it has more kinetic energy. And again, this is just conservation of energy. This comes in with more energy. That's going to be ejected with more energy as well. So that energy. Um, so again, this was the kind of the second concept here, the increasing the um, frequency or energy of the photon is therefore going to increase the kinetic energy of 
the ejected electron. Now as it turns out we can make a nice graph of this and our graph let's see on this side we could put um, frequency on this side we could put uh, let's say kinetic energy max again we'll measure this using our stopping potential and well if we were to go ahead and graph this out what we would see is well for certain frequencies nothing's gonna happen you're gonna get no ejection so it'd be zero 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 right and then all of a sudden you're gonna reach that minimum frequency we call that F naught or the cutoff frequency or threshold frequency we call that threshold frequency as well so once it hits that all of a sudden you're gonna have some kinetic energy and as you keep increasing that frequency the kinetic energy that's going to be ejected is also going to increase okay and you'd end up with a nice linear graph here as um, as you eject the electrons by the way this minimum frequency here this is what we could use to figure out the work function phi okay we would just do that using h times f naught that would give us our work function that's the minimum energy needed to eject so the third thing we did look at was the intensity or the brightness um, so remember if you increasing if you increase the brightness if you increase the brightness essentially what that means with kind of particle when we're talking about photons is we're gonna send in let's say we now send in three photons or five photons so let's say we send in five blue photons this time well each of those photons are gonna uh, liberate an electron now let's never mind the fact that they'll go in different directions let's say all five of them happen to go this way well we are now gonna have more electrons being ejected right and so the energy of those would be the same the stopping voltage would be exactly the same but you'd have more electrons flowing through the circuit now how would we measure that well, we'd use our ammeter. So the purpose of that ammeter is to go ahead and measure the current. Remember, current is charge over time. And so if we have more electrons going through, our current's gonna increase, and that's how we would measure that. So remember, increasing brightness, what that's gonna essentially do is um, increase the number of electrons. But the energy of the individual electrons, the kinetic energy of the individual electrons will be the same. Okay, so that's kind of the experiment here. Um, one last question, by the way, is that this slope has a physical meaning. And actually, I'm just going to leave this as a question for you. Can you figure out what is the meaning of that slope? What's the physical meaning of that slope? All right.